When you begin to awaken, layers will be shed. Layers of what you thought was you. Layers of the world that you're clinging to. Layers of your life that you think are you. Um, layers will be shed. You may experience rage, depression, anxiety, fear, sadness, grief. Ride the wave. Allow these things to exit your system because your illusion self, meaning the ego, is being shed so that your true self, meaning your higher self, can thrive. Embrace the transition. Today, um, well, let me just welcome you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for getting up early. I know it's early. Some of you are still just now waking up and getting out of bed, but this is a great way to start our day. So today, I'm excited to present the topic of um, walking through the eight gates of ascension. Uh, we're we're going to get into how we, how we found these. I've invited my dear friend, Michelle Reward to be a part of this class today. And she's, she's going to kind of help us walk through the eight gates of ascension, according to Mary Magdalene. And uh, it's, this is an interesting story as to how we came in contact with some of this learning. Uh, Michelle is a great longtime friend. We've been friends for probably at least 30 years, maybe even more, I'm, I want to say, because our kids are... Our kids were babies when we first met. So my my son's 33 years old now. So our friendship has gone way back for a long time. Michelle is a hypnotherapist and a massage therapist, and she does energetic medicine as well. Um, when we get through the opening prayer of all of this, then I'm going to introduce you a little bit more to Michelle and why she's here and why I really felt like having a discussion with her today would be so perfect for all of us. Um, so what I want you guys to do, let's put ourselves into a state of learning, shall we? How do we put ourselves into a state of learning? It's the same as putting yourself into a state of healing, spontaneous healing. And how do we do that? By tapping into your higher self. How do we do that? Slow your breathing down. Drop down out of your brain. Drop down out of your mind and put your attention fully and completely into your whole body. Breathe in nice and deep and long. Breathe out long and slow. Keep breathing. I want you to return the breath for the breath. Let's get really present. If we're going to commune with God, if we're going to converse with God and angels, you need to be present. It's the only way to do it. So let's get present by slowing down. Going into that slow energy, breathing in nice and deep, breathing out long and slow. There are many different connecting points. So if you drop your attention and your awareness down deep into your body, you can connect on many different levels through the energy centers, through the meridians, through uh, different levels of consciousness. But today, usually I have you drop down to the base of the spine, which is the foundation of your soul. So I would love for you to put a piece of your awareness there, going down into the pelvic floor area, the base of the spine area. Just think about the base of your spine. Where energy go or where thought goes is where energy flows. So think about the base of your spine. Take some deep breaths into that. If you want to open up space for learning and for receiving, uh, sometimes tapping helps. So we're going to start by tapping right here on the thymus. 
Keep those breaths going, breathing into the heart. So now let's drop down deep into your heart. Open up your heart. Picture your heart being opened up like a flower and you drop down inside of it. And let's just open up your heart. Breathe in and breathe out. Another thing that we can do to just open up space for us to learn and receive Go ahead and grab the earlobes. So you're going to cross right arm over the body and grab the opposite earlobe and just gently pull down, breathe. You can do both if you want. Gently pull down and breathe. Pull down and breathe. Relaxing, dropping your shoulders. You can even go and massage your ears the, all the way around. You should you should feel the tenderness of the cartilage of that ear and just massage it and rub it. You can rub all the way around and into your ear, opening up some space there. You can do both ears, massaging, massaging, pulling down on the earlobes, opening up your ears so that you can hear with your spiritual ears. Breathe in and breathe out. Let's go ahead and tap beside our eyes. Open up your spiritual eyes, your mental eyes, your inner eye, the third eye right here. We can just remind it to open up by tapping here on the third eye. Keep breathing. Don't hold your breath. And then let's move the tapping all the way up to the crown. Breathe in, breathe out, let go. Tapping all the way around in a circle on the crown. Sit up tall, think tall. Picture a string pulling your chest up so that you're tall. Now you're going to take a closed fist and we're just going to gently tap your shoulders, your arms. Open the up, open up some space. All the way down. You can also, with a closed fist, you can do that, but you can also do it with a cupped hand. Doing your shoulders. Opening up space. Another way to open space is stretching. So roll your shoulders, stretching out the upper body. Woo! Another way to stretch out your face, your mind, because we're opening our minds and our third eyes is to just open your mouth big and wide. Smile, smile really big. Pull all the muscles towards your ears and hold that smile, hold that position of your mouth open or your big smile for about eight to 10 counts and breathe. You should already fe be feeling some tingling, some movement of energy in your body. And now if, you, if you're in a place where you can stand, I invite you to stand. So you're just going to stand up like this with your hands down by your sides and gently bounce at the knee. So I just want you to bend at the knee and bounce. And your hands are just kind of hanging at your side. And, and they're doing this. Like you're shaking off a sticky feather. Shake and bounce at the knee. Breathe. Don't hold your breath. Keep bouncing. Keep bending at the knee. Do it for another couple of seconds. Keep bending. Shaking off those sticky feathers off your fingers. Bouncing, bending at the knee. And now I want you to just stop. Let your shoulders drop. Breathe. Do not hold your breath. Breathe into your body. I want you to pretend that you're breathing in liquid light into every cell. You should feel your hands really tingling at this point and your feet. Breathing in light all the way up your body and out through the top of the head. And when you breathe out, just release and let go and let go and let go and just empty your body out. You're welcome to sit back down. Just keep breathing and emptying your body out. All the gunk, all the tension. Whew, that feels so much better. Are you ready to learn? Are you ready to listen? I really would love to invite you. We're going to go into prayer mode would love to invite you to um, 
pay attention with your spiritual ears. We're going to talk about spiritual things today. But these are also things that have to do with the healing of your physical body and your mind and the resolution of your soul. Uh, when you begin healing these things, the inner mind and the wounded heart and the wounded soul inside of you, and you bring resolution to all of that stuff, you can very quickly ascend the ladder of spiritual maturity. And this isn't about being better than someone. Ascension has nothing to do with you being special or better than someone else. Ascension has everything to do with you growing and maturing on your own individual path. So you are the benchmark that you're going to compare yourself to and no one else. You are the benchmark. So we're going to be talking about some of those things. I want you to tap in, think about your creator, think about God. To some people, they call that father, mother, God, creator, universe. I don't really care what words you use. I want you to just think about the creator of all that is. And we're going to communicate with creator. We're first going to talk and then we're going to listen. So I'm going to open the prayer by saying, Father, God, creator of all that is, and Mother, God, creator of all that is, co-creator with God. Thank you for the opportunity for us to be together in this little community that we have, this little safe space of community where there's no judgment. All there is is progression and healing and ascension together with each other as we link arms and band together to become one. We are so grateful for the opportunity to grow and mature as spirits and as humans. Please help our, our bodies and personas and our egos to dissolve just a little bit so that we can tap into the infinite and divine essence of who we actually are to you, our creator. Thank you for bringing us here. I'm going to give you one minute. Everybody, you've got one minute to now just listen. What does God, creator, father, mother, what did they say to you? How can you prepare to receive the message from this class? Ready, go. You might want to write down what you receive. You might want to ask what you want to learn today. What would you like <clears throat> to learn today? Breathing in, breathing out, letting go. There's your minute. Hopefully you got some good impressions, answers, ideas. You know, oftentimes when I approach heaven and I ask God, what are you here to teach me? Often the Lord will say, whatever you want to know. What is it that you want? So let's come into this class with the intention that we want to learn from heaven today. Uh, Michelle and I are going to present some ideas and some thoughts to you, but hopefully you'll listen with your spiritual ears and you'll be able to receive the message that's pure for you, not through our filters, but that's pure for you that comes straight out of heaven for you from God. So that's my intention is that we can do that today. How to live in heaven on earth. I feel like that's the main message that 
that we're going to focus on today is how to live in heaven on earth. We're going to talk about the eight gates of ascension. Um, and I'm going to bring Michelle on here in just a second. Michelle and I have been friends for a long time. She's been a hypnotherapist for a very long time. She's really well versed uh, in that. Um, she's a massage therapist. She's also worked in a field of energetic medicine. Sorry about that phone. Um, <clears throat> and recently, Michelle and I were doing some healing work together. We were in a session together and she discovered a really powerful gift that she has um, stepped into this gift just automatically. And she has this beautiful gift of being able to channel and speak to the divine, speaking to angels and spirits through the veil. We all have this ability. Every single one of us <coughs> has this ability but for some reason, as we were doing this healing work together, Michelle really opened up into that ability a lot more than she had before. And I'm excited for her to share her story with us. Uh, Michelle. Okay. Sterling says, perfect timing for this class with Monday being Mary Magdalene's Saint Day. What? I did not even know that. I did not even know that. That's really amazing. That's really amazing because we're going to talk about some things that Mary Magdalene speaks of and teaches from um, the gospel of Mary. So that's interesting, isn't it? Let's just start. Let's just start. And then we'll, when you're ready, we can just go right into the little presentation that talks about the eight gates if you want. Okay. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and start. Go ahead and introduce the subject matter. Why did you feel impressed to go to this subject matter? I'm curious. Okay. Um, so like um, Janet said, my, um, my session with her was extremely powerful. There's been just a lot of awakening that's happened since then. And a lot of it was so sacred. I'm not going to share it today at all. <laughs> but um from going through that, all of a sudden books and different things started coming into my life. And a friend came over to my house and we started, I was sharing with this person about some of these incredible mystical experiences that I was going through. And she said, I need to tell you about this book, The Gospel of the Beloved Companion. And she had heard about it on a podcast and I needed to hear about the book. And when she said that, I knew that that message was for me and that that's why I invited her over. I, I needed that information. I helped her as well, I'm sure. But um, there is a part of the book that gives you actual steps of layer upon layer um, how to get to that place in your mind where there's no more chatter, where you're really living as your true authentic self. I just need a drink, sorry. Um, I, I think there's lots of ways we can get there. Janet's walked us through something today that I could feel myself going there. And we're never in that spot 100% of the time. It would be so wonderful if we were, yeah. but we live in this world, it's impossible. And so it, the idea is that we just want to get there more times than we're not there. Yeah. Because when we are in that spot, that's when we're truly our authentic self. And that's when you can talk to angels and miracles happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's so true. And and you're right, because we're mortal and we're in these human bodies and we have brains that pull us out of that spiritual place. Uh, we do have to have a high level of awareness to keep guiding ourselves back in and back in and back in. And I think that the more that we stay devoted to just being aware of when you've popped out of your authentic self and when you have guided yourself back in, then that's what will propel us on this ascended path through the gates that we're going to talk about today for 
actual ascension. And this is this comes from the Gospel of Mary as she says she received it from Yeshua. Yes. Um, can I just share a little bit of where this came from? Yeah. Where the book came from. So I'm I'm actually just going to read this from here. So it says, it's generally believed that the gospel of the beloved companion was brought from Alexandria to the Languedoc, which was then Roman Gaul during the early to middle part of the first century. Originally written in Greek, it was first translated into Ossetan, I think you say it that way, during the early part of the 12th century. And, um, and it talks about how this person had access to it because of their religion, that um, these documents were were held in a way that they only the people of this religion were able to have access to these. And okay, Janet, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Okay, good. Let, let's jump Somebody in. They just said they love that book. I know, right? It's so good. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can go find the book. We'll give you, I'll give you a screenshot. I'm, in fact, let's just do a screen share right now. We're gonna go into a short little presentation. Uh, this is going to be a very transformative journey uh, to ascend the eight gates of ascension. I'm super excited to present this little bit to you. This is something that Michelle and I have been talking about. We've been studying about it. And this is the book. It's called The Gospel of the Beloved Companion, The Complete Gospel of Mary Magdalene. You can find it on Amazon. It's really easy to find. In fact, I just Googled it this morning. It's really easy to get. So if you feel so impressed to go get this book, we're going to be referring to, I think, around page 78 or 79, somewhere in there. Um, there's about three pages that we're going to take our are learning from today as we go through the parable that talks about these eight gates. So today you're going to discover the path to a life filled with love, compassion, and understanding. In this class, we're going to explore the principles that form the foundation of all things. In fact, that is what the book says, that this is the foundation of all things. I'm so excited to get to discover these things. And it's interesting, too, because these foundational principles of ascension are, are things that I feel like I have been learning organically just as I have developed my relationship with Yeshua. So I'm so excited to have validation and a second witness to this stuff. <clears throat> so it all starts in the book around page 78, 79, somewhere in there, but it all starts with a parable and it's the parable of a tree. So she, they talk about this tree and, or Mary talks about this tree and it says, I'm going to just read a little quote, a small excerpt from it. And she says, quote, the leaves at the bottom of the tree are thick and plentiful. And so no light penetrates to illuminate the way, but fear not for I am the way and the light. And I tell you that as one ascends the tree, the leaves that block one from the light are fewer. It's possible to see all more clearly. Those who seek to ascend must free themselves of the world. If you do not free yourself from the world, you will die in the darkness. That is the root of the tree. <clears throat> Which is meaning you die in the body without ever reaching that place while you're alive. Yes. Yes. Thank you for adding that. Hmm. You die in the darkness. That is the root of the tree. But if you free yourself, you will rise and reach the light that is the eternal life of the spirit. So we're talking about the pathway or the gateways to eternal life life or spiritual maturity or spiritual ascension, however you want to word this for you. So again, there's the slide that shows how if you stay at the bottom without going through these gates of ascension, you will die in the body without making the progress that we're going to talk about today. <clears throat> Should we stay on that first one for a minute? Yeah. Do we have time? Yeah, we do. Um, so, so, um, so each gate talks about um, needing to rid yourself of certain things. And once you rid yourself of these things, then, then and only then 
can you experience this a blissful emotional state, I guess you would say. So that the root of the body is you need to rid yourself of judgment and wrath. And I think that that's really interesting that that's right down there at the base. And each one of these um, gates is one upon the other, but the foundational one is judgment and wrath. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That is interesting. We're going to talk a little bit about that as we go into the next few slides. Thank you for sharing that. And then it says, um, I'm going to quote another little excerpt. She says, and as he said these things, so she's talking about Yeshua is speaking to her and she's channeling him. She's, she's doing what we just did, which was get in touch, get in tune. And she's channeling him. And he says to her, um, she says, as he says these things, I felt my soul ascend and I saw the first great bough that bears the fruit of love and compassion. So we're going to go to love and compassion. This was the first gate, the foundation of all things. And I knew that before I can eat of this fruit and gain its nourishment, you must free, you must be free of all judgment and wrath. There we go. That's what, that's what Michelle was just talking about. This is not easy to do. I don't know if you've ever tried. This is something that, um, you know, in my meditations just recently, about two or three months, well, it's maybe been about five or six months, actually, uh, I received um, a message as I was praying and communicating and channeling and talking to the Lord. And he said, in fact, it's on my whiteboard. Let me see if I can read it from here. It says, it says, be in a loving relationship with all things without judgment. That was the message that I got a few months ago. Mm. So I wrote it on my whiteboard and I've been pondering on that for the last several days. And when you really strive to be in a loving relationship with all things without judgment or wrath, uh, it really causes you to have to be so much more aware of your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, your responses, the way that you treat people, the way that you see the world. Uh, it's been an interesting journey so far. So let's move to the next gate. The next gate is wisdom and understanding. So I'm going to read a little excerpt from the book. Uh, oh, wait, you know what? Let me go back because there was a little piece of the book that I wanted to share in regards to judgment and wrath. It says, when you've freed yourself from these burdens, you may eat of the fruit and so gain the love and compassion that will allow you to pass the first of seven guardians. And I heard the voice of the Lord of wrath calling to me, which the voice of the Lord of wrath is the devil, right? But I denied him and he had no part in me. And I saw my soul ascend again. And he showed me the second great bow, weighed down with the fruit of wisdom and understanding. <clears throat> what do you want to share about wisdom and understanding? Do you have anything there, Michelle? Um, so with wisdom and understanding, you're not able to receive that unless you free yourself of ignorance and intolerance. And I think it's so cool that this is right on top of judgment and wrath. Because um, when, when we judge people, it really is coming from us being ignorant and intolerant. That's so right? true, yes. Because everybody has a backstory. And sometimes we think they're not fitting into my story, but we're not having compassion, love and compassion for them. Right. Wow. That's profound. I love that insight. So I'm going to read this, the next little clip from her parable. And it says, and I saw that before you can taste uh, of its bounty of wisdom and understanding, you must be free of all ignorance and intolerance. Only then can you eat of the fruit so and so pass upward unhindered through the second of the seven gates. And I heard the voice of ignorance call to me, but I knew him not. And my soul did thus unchallenged, break free from the ignorance and intolerance. So one thing that I added on to, onto this, this isn't a part of the book, but I just added, as we expand our knowledge and gain deeper understanding of the world around us and have that those deeper levels of awareness, 
uh, we can definitely break through this gate into wisdom and understanding as we rid ourselves of these two things, these two evils. Um, and I just wanted to interject that it, it's my belief anyway, that the guardian of each of these gates is your ego testing you to see. Um, and you have to deny the ego in order to move up to that next higher place. Yeah. You know, I've always believed that. I've always wondered, is there really a devil or a Satan uh, that is an actual being? <clears throat> and and who knows? Like, I don't know the absolute answer to that, but I do feel that that is what we're striving to overcome is our own inner voices, our own ego as we ascend on a spiritual maturity path. Here we go. Okay, so now, then my master showed me the third gate, or the third great bow, which bears the fruit of honor and humility. Honor and humility can be ours. Well, let me just keep going. Only when we free, when we are free of all duplicity and arrogance, may you partake of its nourishment. And arrogance called to me saying, you're not worthy, go back. But my soul was deaf to him, and so moved upward and upward into increasing light. So for me, the takeaway from this part is, as we cultivate a genuine sense of honor and humility, we do begin to let go of duality or duplicity and arrogance, and we embrace authenticity. And that's something that you talked about in the beginning, is this is the path to authenticity. And authenticity is the highest vibration possible. And that's why when you're living as your authentic self, then you're able to have magic happen in your life and converse with the divine. Yeah. You know, when I first started on this journey, I thought that love was the highest vibration. And, and it is, but to at our most authentic level, that's what we are, is love. That's who we and are. And I, I want, I'm feeling like I want to say one more thing here is yeah. that um, a lot of times we think that, that we need to act a certain way, right? We need to be a certain way. And if we can get rid of that, because that's really the ego, the ego isn't just about being conceited. <laughs> it's about holding you back. And if we can just be who we are, we're the only person who can be us. Mm -hmm. That's it. So the world needs us to show up as we are. Oh, that is so profound. These are such profound teachings. Like I just, my soul is filled with excitement learning about these and having them be a second witness. You're right in that um, the ego is all about... Um, duality, meaning pride. So pride is when you think you're better than someone, or sometimes you may think that they're better than you and you judge yourself as being less than, or you judge yourself as being better than. And that's, I mean, that's where arrogance, that the arrogance is rooted in pride and pride is rooted in duality and not oneness and not unity and not authenticity. So I just think this this one is such a profound learning. It, I I love it. Okay, next slide. And then there came the fourth bow, blossoming with the fruit of strength and courage. And I heard him tell me that to eat of this fruit, you must have freed yourself from the weakness of the flesh and confronted and conquered the illusion of your fears. And the master of the world stood before me and claimed me as his own, but I denied him and he had no part in me. So my takeaway from this part was just overcoming illusion and the fear of weakness to find our inner strength and confront and conquer our fears. I mean, that is true ascension is to overcome and conquer what we're afraid of. Yes. Um, and I just wanted to add something kind of what I was saying before, but when we aren't acting as our authentic self and we're thinking, we're trying to fit in with 
what we think other people want us to be or whatever. The weird thing is, is it feels off to them. So we're thinking that we're fitting in to this box and they're thinking, why are you acting so weird? <laughs> <laughs> why are you out of the box? It doesn't work. Like it, it really truly works to just be you. Yeah, it does. I mean, that's vital. Yeah. That's vital. I'm saying this because this is not, I've struggled with that in the past. Yeah, so that's too. why it's on my mind. Yeah, me too. All right. Um, are we ready to go on? Do you have anything else that you? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the next gate, I don't remember which gate this is, what number we're on, but five. We're on five. Five. Okay. Um, clarity and truth. Here we go. Only then. My master told me that when you've rejected the deceiver, you can pass through the hardest gate of all to attain the fifth bow and the fruit of clarity and truth. Clarity and truth to me is discovering, like you said, our what is our truth and to be able to speak our truth and to be able to stand in our truth and be as authentic as we possibly can without feeling this overwhelming need to conform to what everybody else is saying or doing uh, and not having authorities to lord over us, but to be our individual selves. That's where we find that inner strength to, um, to stand up in who we actually are. Okay. Yes. Can I just add one thing there? Yeah. yeah. When, and um, I know I keep going on this same thing, um, but when we're not standing in that authenticity, just think for a second about the message you're sending yourself. When you are acting in a way that you think you're supposed to act, imagine how that feels to your soul because the, the message is very loud and clear that who you are isn't enough. I don't want to be responsible for affecting my own self-esteem, my happiness, because there's enough things out there that can be cutting us down. And so we need to be strong enough that we step into our power and feed ourselves, you know, that we know that we love ourselves. Yeah. It's really important. Ah, Michelle, this is just Fire. Like my body's on fire right now because I feel the truth of that resonating into every cell of my being that this is truth. And, you know, oftentimes we get that I'm not enough when we listen to the authoritarian voices from school and work and family sometimes even mm -hmm. and religion and the culture and all of the things that say, no, you're supposed to be in this box. You're supposed to look like this. But, and if you don't look like this, there's something inherently wrong with you versus just giving souls and honoring the freedom to just be who you mm -hmm. actually are. And, and we, as human beings, we have a divine responsibility to nurture that in ourselves and to yes. stand in the truth of it. So let me just go back a little bit uh, to some of the this clip from her parable. She says, the fifth bow was the fruit of clarity and truth. But in order to get to clarity and truth, you must first reject the deceiver of all deception. Only then will you know the clarity and truth of your soul and knowing yourself for the first time, understand that you are a child of the living spirit and as my soul moved upward, I realized that I could no longer hear the voice of the world. And as I had become as, and all had become as silence. So she kind of went into the stillness of her soul, something that we did in the beginning meditation as we went yeah. into prayer mode before this class started. She stepped into the silence and the inner peace. Do you have any insights that you want to add to this? Um, well, I'm sure that the people that are a part of this right now, they understand all of that and the importance of that. But the average person really doesn't know that this robot in the mind is not natural. <laughs> it's not where we want to be. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to work on calming that and get to that place 
where it is pure silence. And when we get to that place of silence, which I like to call the gap between your thoughts, Mm -hmm. when you get to that place, then it's, you've found your soul. It's like your, your spirit, your soul is always there, but it's, it's all covered up by all this chatter. And, and when you get there, it just feels like home. It's like, oh, there you are. Oh, thank heavens you're back. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's, oh, I love this so much. I, I worked with a little 10 year old boy once who had been diagnosed or I'll just say labeled as ADHD and OCD. And I took him through the process of getting centered and, and grounded and tapping into the inner part of his, his soul his self. And we just went into the stillness inside of himself. And I, I taught him how to do that. And I said, okay, Isaac, now tell me, what does that feel like to be in your body? And he just sighed. And he said, it feels like home. Mm. Feels like home. And it's almost like your higher self is in there leaning up against the door jam going, hi, welcome home. I'm love. I'm yes. peace. You know? Okay, now let's moving moving on through the parable. Then in the light above, I saw the sixth bow. The master told me that when you truly have eaten of the fruit of clarity and truth for yourself, then could you partake of the fruit of power and healing, the power to heal your own soul and thereby make it ready to ascend to the seventh bow where it will be filled by the fruits of light and goodness so when you know your own soul you'll Mm -hmm. go through the next gate which is light and goodness and i saw my soul now free of all darkness ascend again to be filled with the light and the goodness that is the spirit and i was filled with a fierce joy i love this uh this is this is something that i teach in my quantum healing is The process of getting centered is tapping in, putting your awareness within your body and slowing down, stepping into that stillness within you um, that is actually you. It's not just to help quiet yourself. It's not just to help relax your body. It is for the purpose of spontaneous healing. It's for the purpose of doing your inner work to strip away the darkness and to become a more authentic version of you. Do you have anything yeah. there that you may want to add? Um, not right off, no. Well, I feel like, I mean, if we, let me just go back. Even if we go back into the power and healing, um, I feel like when we unleash this power to heal ourselves and to resolve things and return ourselves to love, we do heal our own soul and we take control of our life and we prepare ourselves to step into the presence of god so when we really truly come to know our soul and you're not going to know it through an intellectual means you're going to know it by the way that it feels to be inside your body then you ascend to this place of light and goodness go ahead michelle um i'm feeling a little bit emotional because i'm thinking about something that happened just the other day um so I, I woke up from a dream and I was remembering time. It, like it, it took me to times where I really didn't know who I was and how I lived so unauthentically. And I, I woke up and I just cried and just, um, just told my spirit how sorry I am and how much I love my spirit. And I don't want to ever do that again. I don't want to live so unauthentically that I am separated. And it it made me think about my, like if we do that and we live so unauthentically, um, imagine, think about your spirit like a little child. (laughs) That's how I could see it. That it's like, wait a minute, you're just leaving me here. (laughs) Yeah, And it just made me sad to think that, you know, that I wasn't connected and I left that part of myself for a while and I'm so glad to be back. 
Yeah. Wow. Well, to me, this, in fact, let me stop screen share for just one second so that we can visit a little bit more about this. To me, this journey of ascension, this pathway of ascending through these gates and coming to know yourself in all ways and being authentic, the most true, pure, authentic version of yourself, nobody has the right to stand as the gatekeeper for your ascended path. Nobody has the right to say that they stand as the gatekeeper to your salvation. Because <laughs> yeah. to me, salvation is a return home to yourself. Um, I recently, most people don't know this. A lot of my family doesn't even know this, but I recently came through um, being pushed out of my religion. I loved being a member of my religious community. And it was everything to me. I, my whole identity was wrapped up in my temple recommend and the way that people saw me or the way that I was presenting my righteous persona to the world and checking all the boxes and doing all the things and obeying the leaders and doing all the stuff that they were telling me to do or that I was interpreting that that, that was a living a righteous life. And that I was really living a righteous life, but I realized, like you, I woke up one morning and realized that my soul was um, parched. It was starving. It was not being allowed to be expressed fully and completely because I was so busy checking boxes. And when I went in to be they did something called a membership council where they 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 didn't excommunicate me but they did put my membership on probation because of things that i was learning in this ascension process and i was i felt that i was learning direct from heaven from angels and from the lord and um, they did not like the things that i was proclaiming to learn through this process and the things I was proclaiming to experience through this process. And they wanted to punish me for being outside of the bounds of the doctrines or the dogma or the handbook of the church and um, asked me if I would be willing to let go of those teachings that I was learning that they felt I was deceived in, but I knew I was not deceived. They said, aren't you worried about your salvation and your privileges and your covenants that you've made with God? And I said, not one bit. I'm not worried. One, My salvation has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with a church or a religion or people that lord over those things. My salvation is personal. That's intimate. That's between me and my soul and God. And, uh, and it's a, it's a concept that I feel like is extremely foreign to many of us who are on this path. It seems a little scary to step out and be yourself because you're going to get smacked around for that. And not okay. just from religion, but sometimes from family or loved ones okay. or friends will abandon you because they see you as being very different from them. Okay. So I appreciate you sharing that very deeply personal experience. I think many people who watch these classes or come to these classes are in similar positions where they're learning things from heaven that they just don't have context for. And they're realizing in order to stand in their truth and be honest with themselves and true to themselves and nurture their authentic soul, uh, you can, you can, you can get wrecked <laughs> from that like this. It's a huge sacrifice to do that, to step outside of boxes and boats in order to be you. And so I yeah, I, I just want to interject. I yeah. like in some ways it would be easier to play along, but then it's not because then you're denying the truth of what you believe and feel. So it really isn't easier, but in some ways it is. In some ways, it is easier because then you don't have to do the inner work and you don't have to ascend through the gates. That That's hard to let go of the world. I mean, I feel like that's the main lesson that I've been learning on the, on this ascended path, too, is that I've literally had to let go of everything that I was clinging to. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that's not easy to do. It's not easy to do your inner work. It's not easy to take accountability and responsibility for your 
spiritual maturity. Um, but like you said, only you can be you. And you are the only inner authority that there is that speaks for you, that that stands between you and God. It doesn't make any sense for anybody else to know what is right for each of us. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's finish this little piece. We're almost through the parable. Uh, we talked about light and goodness. And she said, um, as my soul turned to fire and flew upwards to the flames from whence my master showed me the eighth and final bow upon which burned the fruit of grace and beauty of the spirit. Let's, let's click through. There we go. Uh, and I felt my soul and all that I could see dissolve and vanish in a brilliant light in a likeness unto the sun. And in that light, I beheld a woman of extraordinary beauty clothed in a garment of brilliant white. The figure extended its arms. Oh, this is going to make me weep. This is so tender. Because she's seeing herself for the first time, she says. The figure extended its arms and I felt my soul drawn into its embrace. And in that moment, I was freed from the world. Um, I realized that the fetter of forgetfulness was temporary. From now on, I shall rest through the courage of, of the time of the age in silence. And then as, it, as if from a great distance, I heard the voice of my master tell me, Miriam, whom I have called the Migdala, now you have seen the all and have known the truth of yourself, the truth that is, I am. Now you have become the completion, and thus the vision ended. Whoa. <laughs> I feel mm -hmm. like this whole process is the recipe for us experiencing heaven on earth now. We don't have to wait to be judged and to go to heaven, we can experience the kingdom of heaven on earth in our own soul, because that is what heaven is, mm -hmm. is yourself, the inner parts of yourself on earth right now. All right, I'm going to turn it to you, Michelle, to just kind of finish out with final thoughts. Um, and then I know you have a meditation that you want to take us into, too. Okay. Um, I hope you guys loved learning about these eight gates. I get so revved up about it. I just, I think it's so cool that we have like a blueprint to follow. I love that. I do too. Um, so I want to just share just a tiny bit about my YouTube channel before I do this meditation. So, um, I have a channel where I, I was until about three months ago, pretty much just posting things about self-help, life coaching tools, stuff like that. And then one day I started, I started giving, getting information for myself yeah. and I thought, I'm, I'm just going to make this into a video, just in a video with with music, just like a one minute short. And that people really liked that. So now that's what I'm posting. And so I, I just wanted to kind of explain how that works is um, like, we're, we're all a part of this collective consciousness. So people would see things that come through in a short speed when they needed to see it. They wouldn't see it if it wasn't something that applied to them. So every couple of days, I will go within, figure out what the message is, and I post this message. And sorry. And they're so good. Can I just say they're so good? I've been listening to them. I've been going. <laughs> and you know what? It's a minute. If you don't have a minute out of your day to listen to something on this, it's, they're so good. And they've they've literally, some of them have just gone viral because people are just so hungry for this experience of being able to communicate through the veil. So thank you for putting this stuff out there. Well, thank you. I've been really surprised at the reception of them. 
And that's just been over about the past two and a half, three months, something like that. Mm-hmm. So um, part of the reason I'm sharing that with you is I'm going to walk you through a meditation. We tried to figure out to play it, but it doesn't come through with music through the internet very well. And so you can go and listen to it yourself. And then when it has music behind it, it's, it's, it's even better. We'll share the link with you guys. When you watch the replay of this, the link will be in the description of the video. So you can just click right on it and use it. So, so now I'm going to walk you through this meditation that, like I said, listen to it with music and it's even better. And the other thing I wanted to add is as I've been listening to it, because I just finished this one at 11 o'clock last night. So as I've been listening to it, I'm realizing I want to put more on there. I, I feel like this was a good beginning, but it's about seven minutes or so. Won't be as long probably without the music, but um, I want to add more to it. So I'm going to do that and I'll be posting another one when that's complete. So, thank you. All right. Okay. So get yourself comfortable. Take a deep breath in. Hold your breath at the top and out. One more time in through your nose and hold and out. Now just breathe normally. You are divine. Your soul has existed through eons of time. You came into being spiritually before you ever came into being physically. Your soul has always been there and it always will be. It never changes. It's the driving force that animates your body. Your soul is like a tree whose leaves never change in the summer or winter. Your body is like the roots of the tree. It's the part of you that keeps you grounded to the earth. But your spirit longs for more. Your spirit longs to ascend the tree and reach the highest branches of the tree. When you've accessed this dimension in your mind, you will have opened a portal to angels and miracles. But before you can access this dimension, you must first release any negative thoughts or emotions that may be controlling your mind. So in this meditation, I'm going to walk you through a process to clear all energetic channels and open up a portal between you and the divine. So now, once again, take a deep breath in, hold your breath, and out. One more time. In through your nose, hold and out. Now imagine a tree in your mind. The base of the tree is dark and covered with thorns and vines made of the energy of judgment and wrath. Now notice how the vines and thorns are thick and heavy, making it nearly impossible for any light to shine through. But as you lift your gaze, 
you notice the light of the sun breaking through the leaves at the top of the tree. Feel the warmth of the sun as it beckons to you and fills your soul with love and compassion. The thorns and the vines are just stepping stones now to help you ascend and learn as you ascend up the tree. Things are getting clearer as you rise upward. There's light where there once was darkness and you suddenly see things through a new perspective. So now, take a moment to pause and look back over your journey. Take a deep breath in, hold and out. Now look up to the top of the tree. You've come so far. You're almost there. You're stronger and more courageous than you realize. Outside voices will try to confuse you and slow you down, but don't listen to them. Just keep moving forward and upward. Reject any deceiving voices and keep your mind crystal clear. Remember who you are. You are a child of the living spirit. You were chosen for this quest. So take some time to enjoy the journey. Smell the flowers, feel the sunshine, and taste the fruit. As you do this, you'll come to know who you are better than you ever have before. Your eyes are open to truth now, and there is nothing in the way of you receiving the light. So continue ascending upward and realize that you can heal your own soul. You can heal your own soul through the light and goodness of the spirit. Now, as you reach the top of the tree, feel the warmth of the sun as it descends down upon you. You are one with the divine now, the completion of completions, the truth that is I am. Now take a deep breath in and out. Welcome home, namaste. Oh my gosh. Like I feel like giggling and laughing and singing and dancing at, all at the same time. Like I just feel so blissed out right now. And I didn't even have to take drugs to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm wearing hippie pants. And <laughs> <laughs> seriously, Michelle, that was so beautiful. Um, every human being deserves to know how amazing and awesome they are and not be told you're not enough or you don't fit or you're not doing it right or whatever. Every human being deserves to step into the authenticity of their soul and feel the joy and the bliss and the love that is there for them. 
You are the love that you think you need. You are everything that you think you desire. You are it. You don't need to seek for it outside of you. Nothing outside of you could be any greater than what's inside. So thank you. Just thank you for, I just love you so much. And I'm getting emotional because I love you because you're my sister and my friend and, um, and I've loved you for 33 years. And I'm so grateful that we were able, we kind of, I moved away from Utah and we kind of departed and then we came back into each other's lives at the perfect time. And you have always been such a healing force in my life. And I just love your beautiful ascended soul. Thank you for being here you today. Know. I'm very emotional, just providing this opportunity for people to tap into the deeper levels of their being and chase away the darkness and ascend the spiritual path of maturity so that we can stand in the presence of God. So thank you for being here. Any final thoughts? Um, is there anybody that has any comments or questions? Yes, someone is, I'm, I can't read them. <clears throat> Lisa says, I definitely have a minute to receive a channel from heaven. Sterling, I know it's not Sterling, but from your phone says, fun fact, Magdala means the tower and goal. Oh, goal. G-D-A-L means greatness and strength. When Yeshua says, Miriam, whom I have called from the Migdala. That's beautiful. So it means the tower of greatness and strength, which is you. Lisa says, I feel my heart expanding so much. Well, I believe that we're at the top of the hour. I think we'll close it out there. I feel like that is prayer enough. We are, we are connected to God in this moment. Just a reminder, if you got Christopher that, also put a comment in there too. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, Christopher, thank you, Lisa. Christopher says, thank you. This being my first Zoom meeting here. I loved this. Thanks for being here, Christopher. And thank you everybody for joining us today. Please, when the replay gets posted, please share it so that more people can have access to this kind of beautiful experience of coming to know how awesome you are. <clears throat> today in our extended class an hour after this so in one hour from now minus eight minutes uh we're going to go a little bit deeper and do our inner work to connect to your higher self for the healing process so that we can do our inner work so we can let go of judgment and wrath and pride and duality and all of those things um we can strip away that darkness that dwells within us and become a more true, crystal clear, authentic version of ourselves and ascend that path and step into the presence of God. Katie says, this was beautiful. So much gratitude. Love you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for shining out into the world. Uh, if you feel so impressed to do the extended, you can go to greatlifegreaterimpact.com and get yourself registered for that extended class right now. All right, you guys have a blessed rest of your day. Thank you, Michelle. I love you dearly. Love you. Thank you, everyone. Good morning, beautiful. You look amazing. You look like a queen. Oh, I do. I'm yeah. I'm wearing hippie pants. Look. Oh, oh I love it. <laughs> I love the whole outfit. I love your hair like that. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is it is it a whole hey, are you thanks. having stormy weather or something? Yeah, but this too shall pass. <laughs> I love that thing that you put on that this too shall pass and then some other shit comes along <laughs> yeah like when i talk to people and they're really going through heavy stuff or just terrible things coming up for them i'll talk to somebody else and they're and it's it's like 
almost like the whole group of humanity is going through yeah. these waves all yes. together and we don't realize that we are so i call up my friends hey i'm getting wrecked are you getting wrecked and they'll be like yeah i'm getting wrecked <laughs> <laughs> having feeling you know that ebb and flow and that it it feels crappy like ugh, what's going on you know body emotions everything right mm-hmm. and the thing that really helped me is uh humor mm. so i started listening to robin williams some of his old stuff and just the laughter, you know, got me into a much better place. Oh, yeah. Laughter is medicine. To oh, yeah. <laughs> if I can't laugh, I'm, I'm screwed. Like, I'm, <laughs> I might as well just give up and die if I can't laugh. Yeah. Yep. So, and I do that a lot. I, I love that you brought that up because oftentimes if I'm kind of in a descended place or in a down place, I will reach out to people and say, hey, give me something that will make me laugh. <laughs> and people will send me cat videos. And-